Hello, my name is Dr. Carlo Oger, emergency physician and founder of edexitvideo.com, a website that provides a comprehensive library of patient medical education videos. This video is about diverticulitis. Diverticulitis is a small, bulging sac or pouches in the inner lining of the intestine, uh, or diverticulosis, that become inflamed or infected, therefore the itis or diverticulitis. Most often these pouches are in the large intestine or colon, the distal uh, part of your intestine. Causes, incidence, and risk factors. No one knows exactly what causes the sacs or pouches of diverticulosis to form, but eating a low fiber diet is one of the most likely causes. People who eat mostly processed food, as Americans eat, do not get enough fiber in their diet. Processed foods include rice, white bread, most breakfast cereals, crackers, and pretzels. As a result, constipation and hard stools are more likely to occur, causing people to strain when passing the stools. This increases the pressure in the colon or intestines and may cause these pouches to form. Diverticulosis is very common. It is found in more than half of Americans over age 60. Only a small number of these people develop actual diverticulitis or the infection. Diverticulitis is caused by small pieces of stool or feces that become trapped in these pouches causing infection and inflammation. Symptoms. People with diverticulosis often have no symptoms but they may have bloating and cramping in the lower part of their abdomen from time to time. Rarely they may notice blood in their stool or toilet paper. Symptoms of diverticulitis are more severe and often start suddenly, but they may become worse over a few days. They include tenderness, usually in the left lower part of your abdomen, bloating or gas, fever and chills, nausea and vomiting, and not feeling hungry and not eating. Signs and tests. Your healthcare provider will examine you. Blood tests may be ordered to see if you have an infection. Other tests to help diagnose diverticulitis include CT scan, ultrasound of the abdomen, and x-rays of the abdomen, especially if done with contrast. Treatment. The treatment of diverticulitis depends on the severity of your symptoms. Some people may even need to be hospitalized, but usually you can treat this problem at home. To help with the pain, your doctor may suggest that you rest in bed, possibly use a heating pad on your belly. Take pain medicines. Ask your doctor about which ones should you use and drink only fluids for a day or two and then slowly begin drinking thicker fluids and then eating regular foods. After you are better, your doctor will suggest that you add more fiber to your diet and avoid certain foods. Eating more fiber can help prevent future attacks. If you have bloating or gas, reduce the amount of fiber you eat for a few days. Once these pouches have formed, you will have them for the rest of your life. If you make a few simple changes in your lifestyle, you may not ever have diverticulitis again. Most doctors and laypersons will tell you not to eat popcorn or foods with small seeds because the chance of these become lodged in the diverticula and then cause diverticulitis or the infection. This has not been proven to be true. In fact, corn is high in fiber and may be helpful in preventing the disease by keeping the stool soft. Do not drink too much coffee, tea, or alcohol. They can make constipation worse. Expectations and prognosis. Usually this is a mild condition that responds well to treatment. Some people will have more than one attack of diverticulitis. Complications. More serious problems that may develop are abdominal connections that form between different parts of the colon and between the colon and other part of the body, like a fistula, abscesses or pocket-filled pus or infection, a hole or tear in the colon, perforation, or a narrowed area in the colon, a stricture. If you are discharged on oral antibiotics and pain medications, it means that we either think or know that you don't have one of these complications. However, there is a single digit percent chance that this will occur even with appropriate and complete therapy. Follow-up, follow-up, follow-up. It is important you follow up with your primary doctor if you were diagnosed with diverticulitis. If you have blood in your stools, if you have fever about 100.4 that does not go away, if you have nausea, vomiting, chills, sudden belly or back pain that gets worse or is very severe. It's important that you then return to the emergency department, the fevers aren't going away, you're feeling sick and have chills, 
the pain is increasing or it started getting better and now it's getting worse again. Any new or progression of pre-existing symptoms should prompt an emergent evaluation in the emergency department. For more videos like this video, please go to edexitvideo.com. But remember that these are educational videos and should never replace the advice or attention of a medical professional.